Welcome to the Green and Gold Weekly. I am Joe Pritchard, and along with me is Don Horn. Don, uh, pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, yeah, thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be with you this week. Thank you very much. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and get right into things here this week on the GrillingTruth.net. Uh, the Packers are on a bit of a winning streak, uh, which is something we haven't said much in the last little bit here, uh, beating Houston 21-13. to uh, Did you get a chance to catch this game? No, I, I did. They didn't have. I'm out here in Colorado, and I wasn't able to, to watch it on TV. But uh, I do know that you know Houston's got a pretty good team, pretty good record overall. But uh, you know, I mean, it was great to see Green Bay come out with a win. I know it was a little closer than what they anticipated for a while, and, and got two wins in a row. That sure beats the four losses they had previously, which is uh, not not the Packers that we know and want to and want to see. No, uh, absolutely not. It was kind of a surprise, uh, even given the issues that were happening early in the season, to have the team go on such a run of bad luck. But uh, coming out with their second straight victory, the Packers did pull off a 21-13 to victory, uh, putting up uh, 14 points in the fourth quarter to take, to take a game where they seemed to have a lot of control over the course of the game and finally put it out of Houston's reach, although Houston had a late rally tried to catch up so they put so they put the game out of reach late uh finally recovering outside kick and as Packer fans can tell you that's not exactly the most comfortable position for the Packers to be in as of late uh but they are coming up on a uh four game string here where they probably can't afford to lose one and if they lose one they really can't afford to lose two they are fifth of the wild card run and they are third of the division. They either got to get to the top of the division or get to at least second of the wild card run. They've got Seattle, uh, Detroit, Chicago, and Minnesota queued up, uh, not in that particular order, but they've got all their division teams and a nemesis coming up. Uh, Seattle is next, though. What do you think they're going to need to do to beat Seattle this week? Oh gosh, I tell you, I mean, yeah, they have, uh, you know, the old black and blue. They finish up three games in the old what we used to call the old black and blue division. And uh, I agree with you, Joe. I think uh, you know they're going to have to do everything they can to, to run the table here in these last four games of the season. And uh, off the top of my head, uh, they're going to have to. I mean, they're going to have to control the ball. You know, I wouldn't be throwing the ball that much downfield so much i'd be throwing you know quick passes i would get uh you know aaron he release uh you know he's got to get rid of the ball quick as he can and just have some controlled uh you know some you know controlled short medium type passing attack and uh who's going to be the running back is it going to be stark or is it going to be montgomery do we know uh they also have Kristen michael on the roster now and he got a few touches this past week but They've had a lot of players back there trying to make up for the loss of Eddie Lacy, and it just hasn't really come together all that well for them this year. I know it. I know the. You know the injuries have, uh, of course. You know that's. Uh, you know that. That's the thing that you know every team faces pretty much throughout the year. You just hope that the injury injuries don't pile up as they much as they have against Green Bay, or kind of all at once or all during the course of a short period of time, but. Uh, you know, Seattle's got a couple of guys out too uh, on defense. I mean, they got what well, Thomas is out. Uh, that might help a little bit. But uh, I'm like you. I I'm kind of afraid this week because you know Seattle is on a run. They're playing. They're playing doggone good football right now, both offensively and defensively. And uh, uh, everybody's talking about Dallas and and uh, a couple other teams. But I think the sleeper this year in my book, uh, you know, is, is Seattle. They might slip up there out of nowhere. And, uh, and and do something, and you know I just hope Green Bay can shut the door on them. The main thing is the good thing I think is that they're playing up in Lambo. Hopefully that'll help. And then uh, uh, I don't believe has has Aaron has Aaron ever started a game against uh, how many? Has, he hasn't lost that many games in the, in the December, has he? Especially against uh, well, I mean Seattle probably hadn't been up there in a while, but I think yeah, he's got a pretty good record in December. Yeah, he hasn't lost too many in December. January is another story, unfortunately, but uh, the the home field advantage of January hasn't been quite the same ever since Michael Vick came and torched us in 2002. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah. December well, yeah, is still on. the ally of the Packers, it seems like. Uh, see, getting Seattle at home, too, it kind of reminds me, going back into the 90s, of always having to go face Dallas in Dallas. We always seem to be going out to Seattle to face them, and now <laughs> we get Seattle at home. So hopefully yeah. that brings us some good vibes this week. You know, and and but Aaron's got that. Uh, you know, I don't. No one knows how bad that hamstring is, but I think didn't he have a bad hamstring last time they played a few years ago out there when they when they kind of blew it on the onside kick a few years ago. I yeah, think Aaron had a, had a pretty good him. game that game. He, he had a he had, he was uh, you know he had a bad wheel that game too. I believe he was kind of favoring that uh, hamstring or growing pull back then, but. Uh, you know, this time of year, these guys just gotta. You know, we used to say you gotta, you gotta suck it up and and go out there and give it everything you got because uh, the teams that play well in December are usually the ones you're going to see more in, in January and hopefully even February. You know, but you got to be playing good ball now in December. That's for sure. The last four games and it's got to start this week. You know, they already started. They're two in a row, and they just got to keep it going. But this week's going to be a big test, a big test for them. So. You know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and and hopefully that Lambo luck will come through. Yeah, and surely they've got a lot to play for. They have a seven-season playoff streak, which is the longest in franchise history, at stake over this next month. So they're going to need to do everything they can just to qualify for the playoffs, and then after that, hope they can get on a run. Now, I wonder, though, with Aaron nursing a hamstring injury and his mobility possibly affected by that, uh, he's tended to scramble out of the pocket a lot this year, trying to look for the deep man. Do you think this makes him look a lot more for the shorter ball and get the ball out of his well, hand yeah, a lot quicker? Yeah, so, you know, exactly. That's what I was trying to allude to earlier. You know, he's not going to be able to be as mobile as you, you know, as he'd like to be, so... You know, he's got to change the game plan somewhat and go for the more, you know, short, medium control type of, uh, of of passes, get rid of the, you know, get rid of the ball, you know, as quick as you can. Don't be running around out there and, and doing something foolish and hopefully, you know, I mean, not you don't want him to re-injure, you know, uh, his hamstring or anything else. You just got to, you know, don't be doing, you know, accolades of the past and looking for the run around and get for the deep uh, Hail Marys and that kind of thing. It's, you know, the you got to be quick. You got to go fast. You know, speed up the offense, hurry up offense, speed it up as much as you can, and, and control it. You know, control it as much as you can. Of course, you got to have a, you got to be able to mix the running game in there too, uh, to counteract that, and balance it out, and, and um, that's what I mean. You know, hopefully Stark and, and, and you know Montgomery are going to be be ready to to handle that. And then, then it's the game plan. It's coach has got to put together a pretty solid game plan and approach to it. And stick to it. So you, know, you, you hear rumors and rumblings up there that they're not too happy with the head coach. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what's all going on, but uh, uh, I know when you when you don't win like the fans want you to win or expect you to win, you know, they go after the coach and the quarterbacks, usually one of the two. And I know they're not going to go after Aaron, so they're starting to yell at, uh, you know, at the head coach. Yeah, it just goes to show how spoiled we get out after all this winning, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it sure does. I, I, I do have to believe, though, that some fans still haven't forgiven um, Ted Thompson and they want McCarthy in it for the whole for the whole way Brett Favre ended up out of town here, and some have never forgiven, and some still keep that in their uh, back of their mind is a check mark against them, even though they've delivered nothing but success or pretty much from the get go. Uh but that's going off on a different track here. Uh yeah. now now Cobb and Montgomery are probably gonna have to feature into this offense quite a bit in a couple different ways. First of all, of course they've been in the backfield a lot. Uh but if they're gonna if the Packers are gonna play a short passing game, you could see Cobb and Montgomery in a lot of slants or screens uh to kind of try to mimic a running game if they don't have one uh to begin with. Uh, what, do you see them playing a huge role this week? Well, I, I think so. I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to to, to counteract, you know, the you know the, the passing attack. You know, you can't do. Uh, you know, it's got to be a good mixture of, of uh, uh, you know, of, of the ground game as well as the air game, and those guys have to be able to deliver. But if it's done, you know, if it's done properly and correctly, and they execute correctly, and they got a good game plan, uh, they both should be successful. I think. I mean, they both should be successful, and I. I've always been a Stark fan. I've always liked him. I've always been impressed with him. 
over the years. I like the effort and, and, and uh, the, way, the way he plays the game, and I just hope he can come and, and continue playing well like he has been recently, you know, come Sunday. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Now, defensively, the Packers have struggled with a bunch of injuries as well, uh, even to the point of playing Clay Matthews in the middle. Uh, this week they're going to be missing Nick Perry. What do you think is going to be the key to stopping Seattle from uh, outscoring the Packers? Oh boy, you know that's uh, it, it, it's just going to be a, it's going to be an all-encompassing you know effort. It's going to be a, a team effort. Uh, uh, Russell's isn't, isn't Russell injury? Is he hurt a little bit too? Isn't he little? Is he kind of limping around a little bit? I understand. Um, yeah, he hasn't been as mobile as in previous years, from what I could tell. Yeah, and Graham, you know, is Graham is Graham healthy? Uh, I mean, they they got to you know it, it's just going to be they got to they're, they're going to have to bring their A game defensively because you know, Clay is is Clay going to play? I mean, is he is he uh, questionable or probable or do we even know? But yeah, uh, I think he's I think he's still uh, as far as we can tell right now he's still in the lineup, but Perry is out. Yeah, yeah, Perry's out, and uh, and, and and Peppers is he? Uh, what's what's the word on Peppers? Yeah, I think the I think Peppers is going to go as well. Oh, you mean, you mean play or not play? Uh, yeah, he'll he'll be playing. Oh, good, good. You know, I just I mean, it's going to be it's going to be one heck of an effort, and uh, you know they're going to have to put it together and and, and stop you know stop Russell because you know he's capable of running around and making a dangerous, crazy, scrambling deep pass. Uh, you know. You know that, that that crazy thing, similar to what he did out there in Seattle a few years ago. You know we, we don't want that to happen at all. But it's going to be an all-out effort. You know, going to stay in his face, keep him boxed in, keep him in that pocket, don't let him get out. And uh, coverage. You know, don't give those guys an opening. Don't give them a chance to. <laughs> don't let them get open very often. And when you do, just keep them short. Keep them in front of you. Yeah, we've seen what happens when the Packers uh, let, let players get over the top in the Washington game this season. They let a couple of deep balls happen. Uh, yeah. They seem to have clamped down since then. It seems like they've uh, fixed some of their problems here. Now, mind you, they faced a couple of less powerful offenses in Philadelphia and Houston, but it seems like they weren't giving away the big play, and I think that's going to be another key this week is not to let them beat you on one play. Yeah, because you know that's been kind of that's been kind of a concern, and I know is that secondary, you know, off and on all years, the secondary hasn't and hasn't stepped up like everybody you know had hoped or expected, and of course injuries don't help there either. But uh, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, I just I just hope they're they're going to be ready, but I'm sure they have. You know, you know, this is game. You know, this is it. This is I mean, you get December. This is uh, this is the time you play. You you play in December. Get ready to finish in January, and then, and then you know, hopefully go to the big one down in Houston this year. You know, you don't want to be like me and you know, go to that Super Bowl and have to buy your ticket to watch the game. You want to go down there and play in it. You know. Well, exactly, and it feels like the Packers started their playoffs real early this season. It feels like almost every game is an elimination game, so that probably keeps the team on their toes. Can that kind of wear a team out though before they get yeah. to where they need to go? Yeah, you know, it, 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 you know, that can because there's always, a, you know, there's always a letdown somewhere along the line. You know, you, I mean, you hate to say it, but that's usually, you know, what happens. But, you know, these last four games, and like you said, they're going to be crucial. And uh, you know, you, you, you start off the, you start off the, you know, the, 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 the run here toward, if you would look at it as, as the run, you start off with Seattle, and you know, and you have to beat them. And like you, you got to be probably three out of the four of the last. And hopefully, you can run the table and beat uh, beat all three division opponents, the old black and blue division opponents. You know, with uh, Chicago, Minnesota, and Detroit. And Detroit's got a good team too. I mean, Detroit's got a, a real good team. I think I've always been kind of impressed with Detroit, and I think Minnesota got off to a, a little bit of a jump start. Uh, a little lucky, and, and uh, they got off to a good, strong start, but they're, they're they're starting to fall back now too. But now, you know, now's the time for Green Bay to make the run. If they're going to make it, they got to start now. I mean, you know, they've already started the run. I mean, they've got two in a row now. Let's just finish it. Let's just let's just complete the task. Right. This does feel like the, the Detroit franchise over the past couple seasons feels like they can't finish. They actually had a pretty decent lead in 2013. 
And by the end, it was the Packers and Bears fighting it out. And with the Lions out of it, by the time the Packers and Bears faced each other on Sunday night for the division title. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I remember that. Yeah, you're right. They have a that's the big that's the big knock on Safford and those guys that they can't finish. They can't finish. And uh, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to say that about my Packers. I want the Packers to finish and finish strong. I want the green and gold to go for the gold. Oh, absolutely. And now it, it always feels like to me, too, when the weekends I get to kick back and watch the 2.30 to 3.30 slot on the Red Zone channel, it always seems like the Lions are playing and Stafford's trying to rally the team after they've given up a big lead. It just seems to be part of the franchise DNA. Does that kind of thing stick with the franchise over the course of years, even with different teams or, or different yeah. players in place? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it does. It, you know, it, you know I, I think it does to a degree, and, and it's funny because some people seem to play better coming from behind or rallying in the end. I mean, they're, they're kind of known for that. But uh, and other, you know, you've seen other players and teams. They, they, you know, they jump out to a lead and then they blow it in the, in the fourth quarter. They just, like you said, they just can't finish. And uh, and and uh, you know, Detroit this year. I mean, they, you know, they're starting to find a way to finish a little more than what they, you know, a little more successfully than they have in years past. Um, but and we shouldn't even be talking about Detroit. We should be talking about Seattle. That is the that is the truth. <laughs> Seattle definitely That's the could truth. finish. Now, That's what we, though, when you're in that, when you're in a spot where Seattle is, where they're three games up on their division opponents and pretty much have the playoffs sewn up. Is that the kind of game where you could see a team let down? Yeah, you you could and, and, and uh you know the coaches might might play some people that they want uh they want to get a little more uh, playing time in or see what they can do and maybe rest some of the other guys. But again, you have to keep that momentum going and you have to keep that attitude and the winning streak going and you have to keep uh you know the same tempo. Uh and it's like anything else in this league. I think there's a lot of pride in, in these, you know, these head coaches and these owners, and, and uh, they're going to do everything they can, you know, to, to win. They don't want a, a, a letdown, but uh, you know, there might be an occasion, uh, uh, you know, that they might play uh, a few other backup type people in some positions uh, towards the latter part of the game uh, if they're pretty confident that they have the division sewn up. But uh, you know. There's a lot of pride in this at this level. There should be kind of money these guys make now. They should be, you know, pride should be number one in everything they do. Right, and they do have still have a shot at a buy too. So they probably don't have a lot to let up on yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, if you get the buy, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's always, you know, you, yeah. You're you're always playing for something. You know, I mean, it's a little different now than it was when we were, you know, when, when I was up there, you know, playing behind Bart and those guys years ago. We didn't have the buys and stuff back then. We just had three. You know, we had a we had a division, the championship game, and then the Super Bowl. There were no buys uh, back then, but yeah, that's right. That's a good. That's a good point. If you're playing for a buy or even home field advantage type thing, you know, you want to do everything you can to do it. So, but uh, you know, Seattle is, uh, you know, they're sneaky in more ways than one, and uh, I, I just hope you know that uh, uh, you know that that the green and gold is going to be ready for them up there when they get up there to to the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field and the, the legends of Lambeau and. And the Lambo luck comes through and helps them out this Sunday. Yeah, well, the good news for Packer fans in this one is that Seattle may be unstoppable at home. They haven't lost yet. But they're actually over under 500 on the road. They're 2-3-1. Three, and one, and Packer fans are hoping they end up 2-4-1 and one after this one. Uh, yeah. So there's the hope that Seattle might come into what's probably going to be a pretty chilly environment in Green Bay. And, uh, they haven't had much luck in Green Bay over the years from – what I remember, so hopefully that stays true as well. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I hope you're right and totally concur. What's the what's the weather prediction? What's the weather supposed to be like up there Sunday? Uh, I don't know about Sunday in particular, but I know we're getting a cold front late in the week, so that'll probably stick around and maybe even some snow over the yeah. course of the weekend. So we might see a repeat of last week, and uh, just it might just be me growing up in Wisconsin, but I always love watching snow football games. <laughs> so last week was a fun one to watch for me. We might get a repeat. Um, I guess I should ask that question, too. How much do the, does, do the elements, uh, when it's not a 
a ridiculous weather situation like I know you've had in the past, but uh, just the normal elements in December, how much does that play a role in you know, changing a game it, plan? It's pretty well. Uh, it, it plays more of a more of a role as far as your game plan than it does for you know as far as uh, you know the, uh, the you know, the rosters of each team. You know, it affects each team equally as far as uh, you know the inclement weather and the elements and that type of thing. But you're you're right. The, you know, a, a key issue on that is your game plan, your attack, and, uh, and and again, I mean, you know, hopefully, I'm sure the coaches will take everything in, into uh, account with that too. Um, but you know, a, a, a cold, freezing day up in Green Bay, in, in, in my opinion, in most cases, you know, should uh, should favor the Packers. But uh, you know, Seattle when they play up in Seattle up there, you know, they play a lot of inclement weather, cold, and and and, and uh, you know, a lot of humidity and stuff like that. So it shouldn't affect them too much. Uh, and you know, hopefully, you know, just again, I just hope it's the Lambo, it's the Lambo luck that's going to come through and. and uh, and, and, and carry the pack to a, to a victory as we finish up these last uh, four games of the season starting this week with Seattle. All right, yep. So definitely not looking ahead too far this week. Seattle's the opponent on the agenda, but you got to know that the Packers are looking ahead to, um, looking ahead slightly to the Bears next week, even with the Bears at 3-9. and nine, That's always a very important game. So hopefully they're not looking too far ahead, but they got to know Bears week is up next. Yeah, well, everybody, yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, the Bears week is the Bears week. I mean, trust me, after, you know, it's funny, when I was when I was up there, when I did play, uh, you know, when, when Bart was injured, um, my best games were always seems to be, they seem to be always against the Bears, uh, especially in, in Chicago. And, uh, uh, you know, memory serves, and, 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 and I know a lot of former uh, Packers, I mean, trust me, they're, you know, <laughs> They will be ready for the Bears. I'm not worried about the Bears. They will be ready for the Bears, but that's, uh, you know, again, you know, we got to get by Seattle here this week, you know, for sure, you know, for sure. In fact, I should call. I'm gonna, I want to call Jerry Kramer. Uh, I'll be in touch with Jerry Kramer tomorrow, and I want to see if he's gonna plan on going. You know, Jerry goes a lot of the games up there in Lambeau, and maybe he can, you know, if he's gonna go, maybe he'll bring him some of that, you know, that Lambeau luck as well. So. Yeah, any little bit will help, that is for sure. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll save most of the Bears talk for next week because I'm sure there will be plenty yeah. of it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and wrap up this week's uh, Green and Gold Weekly. Uh, I'm Joe Pritchard uh, for Don Horn. You're listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak. 